I want to talk today about a favorite subject of mine, which is Sharia, the theopolitical legal code that authoritative Islam seeks to impose on all of us, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Uh, this is in the news at the moment for a lot of different reasons, uh, not least that uh, President Obama will go early next month to uh, Turkey, where he will be participating, among other things, in something called the Alliance of Civilizations meeting. Um, the alliance is, like most UN things these days, dominated by uh, an entity called the Organization of the Islamic Conference, or OIC. Um, about 57 Muslim-majority countries uh, participate in this and are using it increasingly as a means of asserting um, their agenda, uh, a Sharia agenda, uh, internationally. Um, notably in connection with restrictions on freedom of expression. Uh, the OIC back in uh, oh, uh, some years ago now uh, just began trying to find ways to circumscribe the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the foundational document of the United Nations that provides, among other things, for freedom of expression. And instead they want to say, well, you can have freedom of expression only in so far as it does not give offense to Muslims. Um, this is often described as a, a protection against something they call Islamophobia. Um, the Alliance of Civilizations will be taking up this agenda. I suspect that they will, will be talking about it while uh, President Obama is in Turkey. They certainly are going to make it a major theme of the Durban II conference that will be taking place in Geneva a few weeks later. Um, all aimed at trying to find ways to impose upon, again, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, a Sharia blasphemy law. Um, this is not consistent with the Constitution of the United States, with our First Amendment freedoms. It's not consistent with, for that matter, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, or indeed the practice of uh, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, the press, freedom of expression more generally in uh, many countries of the Western world. But it is in the crosshairs for those who adhere to Sharia, and I'm afraid that by seeking to uh, embrace such folks or express respect for them, as the President keeps saying, he's playing into their hands. Another example of this, uh, also a bit in the news lately, is uh, something called the uh, U.S. Muslim Engagement Project, um, an enterprise that has been funded by a number of left-wing organizations and foundations, um, but that has brought um, into a uh, leadership group a number of uh, prominent non-Muslim figures, uh, notably uh, former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, uh, former member of Congress Vin Weber, and uh, a host of others, uh, former Deputy Secretary of State Richard Armitage and the like, to endorse what amounts to um, the playbook for this respect agenda, for this effort to promote um, what I, I think has to be described as the Sharia enterprise um, in America and elsewhere around the world uh, under the banner of something called Changing Course, um, a, uh, a blueprint for how to improve U.S. Muslim relations uh, published by this U.S. Muslim Engagement Project. Here's the point. Um, when you have prominent figures uh, like Madeleine Albright, like Richard Armitage, uh, like Vin Weber, promoting on in the Congress, uh, uh, in the executive branch, around Washington, in the press, uh, the ideas that have been espoused and are being actively advanced by uh, an organization called the Muslim Brotherhood, um, a particularly uh, problematic enterprise, a, a, uh, an organization that now has a myriad front organizations here and elsewhere around the world but that has a common purpose. And we know from evidence submitted to um, the uh, federal uh, trial prosecuting the Holy Land Foundation for financing of, uh, of international terrorism, that that message, that, that mission, I should say, of the Brotherhood in America is to destroy Western civilization from within. 
that's not something that anybody, not Madeleine Albright, not Vin Weber, uh, not Barack Obama, uh, should want to be associated with, let alone advancing. Our only hope that that will not be, in fact, uh, increasingly embraced by the U.S. government, um, facilitating the insinuation of Sharia mm -hmm. as a sort of initially parallel society inside the United States, but with highly corrosive effects on both our freedoms, our constitution, and ultimately our security, is if the American people understand what's afoot and make it clear that friends of the Muslim Brotherhood are no friends of America. Thanks for listening. <laughs>